going to hear from uh, Ahmed Maki, who's the Enterprise Solution Strategist at Software AG. Um, and he is, uh, he's going to uh, talk a little bit more about how you, how you take control of, of microservices. And in particular, he's going to talk about uh, App Mesh. Um, Maki, would you like to uh, share your audio and video now? Hey, Marky, great to uh, great to have you back um, after we had the uh, the virtual conference earlier this year. Uh, can you hear me all right? Yes. Uh, okay, great. How, how how to share the slide? Sorry, I forgot. Uh, there's an icon uh, near the bottom of ah, the okay, screen. Okay. 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 You're all set. Can you see my slide now? Yes. Yep. Uh, I can see your, okay. your title slide. Uh, over to you. Yeah. Yeah. Great. Uh, thanks for the time, uh, John. So yeah, it's it's good to be back because I think uh, last March we postponed this uh, uh, API days and 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 uh, replace it to through the online online recording. But now it's it's live. So. It's good to be back. Then, uh, in this session, I will I will brief uh, you a bit about uh, uh, how to take control of your microsystems architecture, microservices architectures with with the API gateway as well as uh, our uh, innovation that called AppMesh uh, uh, as uh, in, in the in the coordination with the service mesh as well. So let's start with. Mackie, just before yeah. you, you go, um, I had your camera on a moment ago, but um, but I'm not seeing you now. Did you change something now? It, it may just be me. Uh, okay, I can see you again. All right. Sorry to interrupt. Yeah, okay. Okay, so let let's let's start with 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 the microservice itself, right? I mean, uh, microservices is now becomes a, a, a top of the conversations, right? So I mean, it, it basically uh, uh, carrying the promises of uh, uh, flexibility where developers can develop in their own platform. So you can choose whatever you have, like it can be Java, Python, or uh, Node.js, or whatever. And and basically, it's also uh, provide the uh, decomposing the applications into the smaller granularity of the services, so that it can be more scalable uh, as well as uh, we cannot deploy it redundancy whenever one services is uh, down. We can we can replace it with the other the other microservices easily. And as well, uh, uh, the microservices can be uh, scaled out uh, uh, accordingly, so only function that that relevant to the business uh, requirement can be scaled out without uh, uh, Im impacting the other functionality like what we have in the monolithics. But I think the the the, the main uh, uh, values of the microservices is for the business itself so that microservices can provide the agility basically to to respond to the business transformation as uh, required so we can just uh, modify uh, the the relevant microservices without impacting the other uh, microservices uh, as well and the journey from the monolithic to microservices is is not easy. I mean, of course, uh, the the it is important because uh, microservices has a lot of uh, 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 promises to uh, compared to the monolithic, right? I mean, if if it is monolithic, then we need to change uh, all of those uh, uh, 
business logic, UI and data access every time we have a change uh, in the modules, but using microservices, we just can only change that particular microservices without uh, improving the other uh, components in the architecture. So it is, uh, but we learn also from uh, the, the organizations like Netflix, uh, Twitter and Amazon that they are successfully uh, converting their monolithic architecture to the microservices and uh, end up with the, the supporting new business growth of their, their uh, companies. So I think the way forward is to, to go with microservices, but of course it's not an easy journey. I mean, uh, why it's not an easy journey? Because uh, microservices itself will will typically uh, uh, creating the the operational challenges, right? I mean, uh, growth. We we will have the the microservices uh, uh, growing, so it, it's it's not only uh, covering one domain but also multiple domains, and then we will have a lot of services to be managed and and of course there is uh, uh, challenges like for example how to find uh, which services we are going to call and and of course there is also difficulties in in uh, logging the 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 uh, service call because uh, the the microservice itself is distributed uh, along the architectures and of course like uh, how to ensure the the uh, file fault uh, management right i mean for example we deploy the microservices uh, over the clouds and and uh, how we can detect if one microservice is down and 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 uh, switch to the other it, it's it's basically mostly is some operational challenges and and so uh, how we will uh, handle that challenges uh, is Typically, uh, there is a two options here. We can code it uh, inside the service itself, but we can also use the other technology like uh, service mesh, for example. So service mesh like uh, ISTO and Linkert uh, typically uh, uh, have the common features like uh, service discovery where we can uh, discover a service endpoint uh, through the service registry. And as well, it can also provide observability means that service mesh can provide the distributed logging and tracing so that we can understand uh, 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 connection between one logs to, to each other, although it, it goes over the multiple microservices. And, and as well, the service mesh has can also provide the fault tolerance, so it kind of like uh, provide the server keep breaking uh, uh, mechanism and as well as the load balancing and failover and so on. And, and as well, uh, service mesh can also provide the security uh, to the connectivity. I mean, it can some of it can provide the, the transport level security and also the uh, simple access control like uh, uh, blacklist and whitelist. Yeah, and, and basically we, we can say that service mats can handle the, the, the operation requirements that that uh, uh, triggered by the microservices uh, uh, and basically help us to, to provide the manageability of the microservices along of its uh, uh, growing over the multiple business so it can basically uh, uh, provide a service recovery observability fault tolerance and it's also security and connectivity features and we can see that that uh, uh, this is the the comparison uh, between uh, developing a service with out using service mass uh, in the left and, and uh, on the right is that uh, uh, when we develop the services with service mass. So as you can see, the yellow one is basically a, a portion uh, 
taken care by the service mesh. So we can basically uh, uh, kind of like uh, uh, code uh, or, or, or uh, embed the, the general policies uh, where, where is this uh, related to the, the operational methods to the services mesh and we can uh, focuses on the uh, writing on the business logic for each of the services. So at the end, service mesh can help us to, to focus on, on the, uh, writing the business logic of our services because it basically takes care of the other uh, operational policies that are required for the uh, uh, networking or our operational capabilities. So yeah. so. There is a, a, a values that we will have a service mess uh, to to develop our services. But uh, uh, along with with the, the business growth, uh, then uh, our microservices will also grow, right? So we can, for example, uh, uh, Splitting the each of the microservices that related to the to the certain topics in, in, inside the domain. For example, domain is kind of like uh, payment or or customer management or, or provisioning or something. So at the end, we will have uh, multiple domains that will uh, interact each other. So uh, I mean, inside uh, each of the domain, there will be a lot of microservices interacting each other. And of course, there will be a, a connectivity or interaction between uh, the microservices uh, inter the domain. So, I mean, uh, microservices in domain A, for example, will will interact with domain B and domain C. And then, then this this uh, uh, this uh, uh, this uh, uh, trend will 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 go moving forward, right? I mean, the the, the bigger the application or the uh, this growth, and the more microservices do we, that we have in it, right? So uh, there is a, a paradox on these things, right? I mean, uh, for example, microservices can can show its values where it is uh, already implemented uh, uh, across the the business uh, 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 scope, but to 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 reach that that the level of business scope, we, we also will have a lot of complexity uh, challenges, right? So uh, at the end, we will have to adopt a lot of uh, uh, automation tools and as well as the CI/CD tools to automate the development and operation and and uh, help us to to uh, go through the, the this of the microservices. Uh, complexity when when the, the the domain that we need to develop is getting larger and larger so but but if we don't have the design and and uh, the tools or, or the something to control the microservices then at the end it will become a, a kind of like again a back to the to the uh, integration challenges it, it become like a a dead star, right? Because it, it connects to a lot of domains and, and uh, basically uh, we kind of are losing a, a business uh, or application context of this uh, connected uh, microservices domain at the same time. So uh, what we suggest or we, what we have in, in uh, our technology, basically we, an API management layer, basically to control the, this uh, microservices runtime, so we can uh, we can have uh, uh, multiple policies defined on the API management, basically to to control the the API management more from the application access point of view, and we also we need also to have not only the the north south uh, the traffic handled by the api gateway but as well the the east to west traffic also need to be kept by the api gateway so 
I mean, there is also the traffic between microservices that will will become uh, uh, a focus on the microservice architecture. So it's not only from the users to microservices, but also from microservices, uh, first microservices to the second microservices. We also need to kind of like uh, uh, the ability to control that kind of track. And that's why uh, there is also uh, uh, another uh, technological uh, component that's required in this case. So uh, this way, as we all, that is serving the north south traffic and typically it protects uh, the public API and, and primarily uh, it works on the inter-domain services. But uh, we also need to have some kind of like micro gateway uh in, in addition to the this uh, main gateway so that uh, we can control the the east west traffic and as well as to protect uh, the private apis which means uh, uh, typically it's a uh, traffic between our know, first microservices and the other microservices so and and, and yeah basically we need to have uh, these two kind of gateway in the microservice architecture And yes, and uh, again, uh, back to the surface mesh. Uh, surface mesh can help uh, in these uh, architectures uh, to provide the uh, network level requirements, such as discovery, observability, logging, fault tolerance, connectivity, and security. But there is uh, 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 a context of the application that, that surface mesh uh, is not covering, which is some kind of like, for example, we we still need to write the code to understand uh, who the end user of the application is. I mean, uh, because if we think, for example, from the the microservices invocation, right, and, and they they interact uh, between the microservices, and and basically we don't have such a, a context of the application on the service mesh, so we kind of like. Uh, does not know instantly who who is the end user of the applications, and, and we we also need to write a code, for example, to mask the sensitive data. Uh, for example, this is uh, related to the uh, uh, banking or insurance uh, that, that they typically uh, protect their subscriber data or or for example credit card numbers and so on. So we need to still to write the specific code for that things. And as well, if there is a, a specific context of the application where it can uh, decide the, the which route to choose from the microservices execution, we also still need to write that code uh, uh, outside the service map itself. So that's why in software AG, we, we, are, we are basically having a different layer that, that complementing the service mesh to provide the the business context of this uh, uh, microservices integration that's what we call it app mesh so basically uh, app mesh is working together with the the uh, proxy uh, kind of application like envoy for in in the sto and basically uh, it, we, we we kind of like deploy it uh, uh, on the other uh, uh, pro proxy as well uh, that we can uh, manage using the micro gateway. So you can see on the right side, there is a blue uh, box that is uh, a parallel with the yellow box is basically the micro gateway that is uh, deployed uh, parallel to the envoy uh, of the ISTO that basically can do api application of the microservices so we can we can regard the microservices at its own api and then we can basically uh, provide a lot of policies uh, uh, in the level micro gateways so we can do identify and identity and uh, access policies we can do uh, uh, routing policies, we can do request and response uh, processing policies. 
or we can even do the traffic monitoring policies uh, uh, inside the, the micro gateway itself. And yeah, and, and as I said before, using those micro gateway, we can then also integrate uh, between uh, one microservice to the other. So we can do the API level integration and we can also do the, the monitoring of the uh, services, not only from the services point of view, but but basically we can we can have uh, application contacts uh, uh, that can be monitored. So you know, uh, we can we can uh, tap on un until the payload level to get the the, the application contacts, and we, we can have the the relevant uh, business analysis uh, related to that that uh, particular applications. So yeah, that that's uh, uh, about the app mess and and at the end, uh, uh, consisting of the the API gateway and micro gateway, but we also need uh, the uh, developer communities, right? I mean, because API is typically use uh, on the business case where the third party is connecting to our uh, APIs. And, and basically there is also an API portal uh, that requires to have the community engagement and, and basically uh, uh, having the developer to access our API and also govern their, their uh, development uh, kind of things uh, to the API portal. So basically, there is two things that is in the, the the architecture, which is the first is the API gateway alongside with the uh, micro gateway where we can deploy the app mesh to control the the application uh, contacts, and as well there is an uh, API portal for us to do the partner engagement uh, for the developers community for the API that we publish itself. So uh, yeah, so basically. Yeah, that's that's what uh, I I would like to present. So, uh, recapping from the 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 first presentation. So, the first is microservices, of course, uh, give us the the flexibility to 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 uh, support the business growth and and as well as to to having the agility to 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 change. Uh, uh, Separated from the the, the, the whole uh, applicants, but it all it will also uh, increase the complexity of the operations. Uh, so, and then service mesh can help uh, to solve the micro uh, the operational challenges, but it still have gap that it cannot uh, handle the the applications context in this case and. We uh, have the the app mesh uh, uh, layer that can bridging the microservices world with the API management, so that we can take control of uh, our microservices uh, with the the application context uh, uh, routing as well as the uh, uh, application level uh, kind of like other uh, logic that we can uh, embed. Uh, easily uh, using the the micro gateway capabilities that work hands in hand with the, the service mesh. So that's what I uh, present. And uh, by the way, we also uh, listed as the leaders of the leaders in uh, the latest Forester API management solution wave, uh, both from the uh, current offering as well as the strategy which is basically reflecting our roadmap so we we basically the our api management is is supporting the the multi-cloud environment hybrid environment and as well as the the edge computing so that we we also have the iot platform that, that can be uh, involving the api management and then uh you can also uh, have a free trial on the soviet edg.cloud uh and you can also download the uh api gateway and api portal from our docker hub and probably you can also 
take a look at the, our GitHub and our YouTube uh, that consisting of uh, the demos online. And by, by the way, we will have uh, demos in uh, next session after the break. And yeah, uh, see you there. So I, I'll put back to John. Thanks very much, Ahmed. Um, that's, uh, I, I think, a, a useful uh, contrast to the, the earlier presentation, which was about uh, practices to, to help you um, manage microservices better. And, and here you've given us a good overview of the different architectural options for, for managing your microservices. And uh, yes, certainly encourage people to attend uh, Software AG's workshop, which is going to take place uh, immediately after the, the break. So thanks, uh, thanks very much, uh, Ahmed Maki. Okay, so um, Ahmed, if you could just uh, stop sharing your screen for a moment, I will be able to uh, share the, uh, the agenda that we're going to proceed with uh, for the afternoon. Uh, thanks, thanks very much.